AMD FreeSync is an amazing technology, which is why I believe that the vast majority of PC gamers out there should be using it. It eliminates screen tearing, judder and most forms of stutter, while also giving you the benefit of adding no additional input latency, as well as the freedom to target arbitrary frame rates, providing that they fall within the monitor's variable refresh rate window. This provides you with incredibly smooth gameplay with none of the downsides associated with traditional forms of sync, such as V-Sync, AMD Enhanced Sync, Nvidia Fast Sync, Adaptive Sync and even triple buffering via borderless window mode. And that's why in this video I'm basically going to straight up try and convince you to seriously consider upgrading your monitor. That is of course once you've already picked up one of our glorious Sapphire Nitro Plus or Pulse branded Navi based GPUs. You see, as somebody that's been using variable refresh rate technology to drive my primary gaming display since way back in 2014, I can confidently and honestly say that a decent monitor upgrade is going to be the most cost effective and downright impressive upgrades available to most gamers. If you're somebody that's already rocking a decent modern display which uses a technology like V-Sync, you should already know exactly what I'm talking about and so I ask you kindly to, if you've got the time, please share your experiences down in the comment section below so that other viewers may get more than just my word for it. Now before we jump into the meat of this video and try and demonstrate the advantages of variable refresh rate technologies, I want to quickly suggest that you set this video to 1440p and 60fps regardless of your current monitor's native resolution. This is simply because YouTube allocates a much higher bitrate to 1440p videos when compared to 1080p, giving you a much more detailed image. I also want to suggest that if possible, you set your monitor's refresh rate to either 60Hz or 120Hz. By making sure that your refresh rate is a multiple of 60, you will ensure even frame pacing while watching this video, making it nice and smooth. If you're watching this at 75, 144 or even 165 hertz, this video will contain some judder, making the following examples much less effective. Right, so with that out of the way, let's start off by taking a look at a few of the problems that FreeSync aims to address. These are screen tearing, judder and stutter. Screen tearing is what happens when you've got no sync between your graphics card and monitor. If you've got V-Sync disabled and you're not using any other forms of sync, you're almost certainly going to be having screen tearing to some degree or another, though just how noticeable it's going to be normally comes down to what kind of content is being displayed, your current frame rate and even the game itself. Judder on the other hand is what you're going to get if you do sync your monitor and graphics card without also syncing your frame rate. This means that while you shouldn't be getting any screen tearing, the gap in time between each frame that gets displayed will be uneven and as a result motion can lack fluidity. This will happen whenever you're using a technology such as AMD Enhanced Sync or Nvidia Fast Sync. In fact, even borderless window mode will show similar results when V-Sync is disabled. And then we have Stutter. Put simply, Stutter is what happens if a frame takes too long to render, resulting in the previous frame being displayed across multiple monitor refreshes. It's most noticeable when a form of sync other than FreeSync or G-Sync is used, but it still does happen when all sync is disabled. These are the three issues that FreeSync aims to address and thankfully it succeeds. Providing that you're somewhere within your specific monitor's variable refresh rate window, you should get an extremely smooth and stable experience with no sign of the three ugly artifacts that we just spoke about. Unfortunately however, the biggest issue we face when trying to show you the true benefits of variable refresh rate technology is that it's quite literally impossible to do so. All we can really do is attempt to simulate what perfectly synced gameplay looks like next to gameplay that isn't. It's kind of like trying to demonstrate the advantages of HDR on an SDR display, the advantages of 4K on a 1080p display and the advantages of high refresh rates on a 60Hz display. Even when we try to simulate the effects in the hopes of giving you at least some idea of what you can expect, the true benefits are usually much bigger than what these simulations would lead you to believe. Now, beyond what we've already talked about, there is still one major advantage that technologies such as FreeSync offer that rarely even gets spoken about, and that is the ability to target arbitrary frame rates. You see, on a traditional fixed refresh rate display, if you're hoping to get a super smooth experience with no screen tearing, you basically need to ensure that you're able to maintain enough frames to match your monitor's refresh rate, and this can be an incredibly difficult task, especially at higher refresh rates such as 144Hz and above. 
In fact, this is rapidly becoming nearly impossible on the latest and greatest big budget AAA releases due to reasons such as the recent uptick in games opting to go for real-time in-engine cutscenes, which are great by the way, and even down to so many newer games running into some serious CPU bottlenecks. With FreeSync enabled, it doesn't matter if your frame rate is a little bit lower during cutscenes, the game is still going to look perfectly smooth with no judder or screen tearing. And when you do run into CPU bottlenecks, the horrible micro stutter which is often associated with CPU limitations is going to be massively reduced. Over the years, I found that providing that a game has got decent mouse input, I am more than happy to lock my frame rate to around 92 FPS. Now obviously higher is even better, but there are certainly times where I definitely choose a lower average frame rate in order to achieve a consistent feeling mouse input. Competitive focus titles on the other hand often offer much better frame rates on average than highly scripted single player games, so here I would normally set my monitor to 144Hz, enable FreeSync and then cap my frame rate using an in-game FPS limiter to around 120FPS. One thing that a lot of people don't seem to know or understand is that capping your FPS using an in-game limiter can often drastically reduce input latency due to the game preventing the CPU from getting too many frames ahead of your GPU. This actually brings me on to the most common concern that many people have in regards to variable refresh rate technologies, and that is input latency. You really don't have to go far to find people, including popular gaming content creators and even many competitive gamers, that really should know better, claiming that both AMD FreeSync and Nvidia G-Sync have a negative impact on input latency. This is simply not true. The origins of this rumour slash misunderstanding stem back to an early misunderstanding in regards to VSync and its use alongside variable refresh rate monitors. Both AMD and Nvidia recommend that you have VSync enabled while using a variable refresh rate. This is for two reasons. Firstly, VSync ensures that both FreeSync and G-Sync remain 100% turf free at all times. However, it also ensures that if your FPS exceeds that of your monitor's maximum refresh rate, standard VSync will take over. The problem with this is that while you'll no longer get any tearing judder or stutter when your FPS drops below the maximum refresh rate, you will now get full VSync input latency while at the maximum refresh rate. The thing is, providing that you cap your frame rate below the monitor's maximum refresh rate, VSync never takes over and you'll experience zero additional input latency when compared to VSync off, while having all the additional benefits that we've already gone over in this video. What's even better is that if you're able to cap your FPS using an in-game limiter, there is a good chance that you will actually end up with lower input latency than somebody not using an FPS cap with much higher frame rates. I'm actually going to leave links to some sources that have tested out the button to pixel response times extensively so you don't just have to take my word for it. FreeSync is the real deal and I truly hope that we do get to continue to see its adoption spread. I just really wish that there was some way that I could invite you all around to my house for some socially distanced playtesting, because I honestly believe that the vast majority of people that get to try it out for themselves will not want to go back to a standard fixed refresh rate monitor ever again. Finally, before I shoot off, I'd like to quickly go over a couple of the features that I recommend that you keep an eye out for when considering an upgrade to a FreeSync enabled monitor. Firstly, I'd always try to aim for a monitor with a refresh rate above 75Hz, especially when it comes to 1080p and 1440p displays. Though honestly, providing that you've got the available funds, I would seriously consider targeting a monitor that is capable of 144Hz or higher. Not only do higher refresh rate monitors lead to smoother, much more responsive gameplay, but they also give you plenty of headroom to avoid the vSync problem that we mentioned earlier. And secondly, you're going to want to make sure that you pick up a monitor that supports something called LFC, which stands for Low Frame Rate Compensation. LFC basically doubles FreeSync's refresh rate whenever your frame rate dips. It does this by showing the previous frame across multiple monitor refreshes. This enables the monitor to keep using FreeSync at very low frame rates without producing flicker or disabling FreeSync altogether. Hopefully, you'll barely ever fall into the LFC range, but when you do, LFC can really be a game changer. One of the many great things about FreeSync is that it's supported by an awful lot of monitors. The not so great thing however is that this can make finding the right monitor for you a daunting task. That is why I'm going to leave a link in the description that will take you to AMD's official list of FreeSync enabled monitors. The site allows you to choose various filters that makes finding ideal candidates much easier than simply browsing online storefronts. If you do decide to pick yourself up a shiny new monitor, please do make sure that you check a couple of reviews first. And after that, I want you to make sure that you're happy with the manufacturer's warranty and return policy, especially in regards to any potential dead pixels. 
I only bring this up because if I'm recommending you to go out and upgrade something, I'd hate to think that my advice has resulted in you getting burnt, so please do do your homework and I'm sure that you'll end up with an awesome display that will serve you well for many long years to come. With all that said, if you found this video useful then please be sure to leave us a like. If you're new around here then how about you consider slapping that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you'll get notified whenever we upload new videos. The comment section is going to be the best place for any questions, suggestions or feedback. However, for now, that is going to be me done for today. So from everybody here at the Sapphire Tech YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye bye.